Fox 4 News presents Meet the Candidates, an opportunity for local voters to hear directly from the candidates. Now to our last candidate forum this week. First, the candidates running for one of the two at-large seats on Beaumont City Council. They join us in the studio and later those running for the Ward 2 seat will join us. We'll start with the one minute introductions for the at-large candidates. And first for that, we start with Tony Renfro. Well, thank you. Thank you for the invite. My name is Tony Renfro. I'm a candidate for City Council at large. I'm a native of Beaumont, Texas. My passion is to serve all the citizens of this great city of Beaumont, Texas. I will bring new leadership, vision, and a plan. I have over 24 years as a successful business owner, and I will transfer those business expertise and experience to make sound city business decisions. So when I'm elected as your new city councilman at large, I plan to propose pay raises for city civilian employees. Uh, bring diverse business and high tech. So this is why I'm the person that you will want on your council to execute these changes that's needed for all the citizens of Beaumont, Texas. So when you go to the poll and vote, vote number six, Tony Renfro, your next city councilman at large. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Renfro. And next we have W.L. Pate Jr. Thank you, Kim. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight. I want to ask all of you, when you go to the polls, I want you to think about what's transpired and since I first got elected. I want you to think about Calder. I want you to think about Washington Boulevard. I want you to think about the Event Center, the Lakeside Center, Northwest Parkway, Delaware, Magnolia, 11th Street. All of these things just didn't accidentally happen. They happened because we worked together to make it happen. So when you go to vote, Think about the candidate who stands here before you and says, look at the results, because results count. I've been representing all of the people all the time here in Beaumont, Texas, and I would like for you to support me when you go to the polls. That's W.L. Pate, lucky number seven, on the ballot. Now, Mr. T.J. Rodman. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, we are on, the genera on a cusp of a generational shift and it's time for younger people to step up and take charge. If we don't have younger people coming in, how are we going to face the, the growing concerns about technology, the growing concerns about the future of Beaumont? What I bring to the table is a knowledge, knowledge of how the city government works, knowledge and how that we can generate revenue to take care of some of the more pressing issues in our town, like infrastructure, crime, poverty, lack of opportunity. My, cam my campaign platform is innovation, creativity, which leads to opportunity. If we are creative in the way that we solve problems and we innovate in the way that we apply those solutions, we're gonna provide opportunity for everyone across Beaumont, from the youngest to the oldest. And I hope that when you go to the polls, you'll remember my name, Thomas T. Drodman, number five on the ballot. Thank you very much. Thank you, and now Mr. <coughs> William Sam. Thanks, thanks for having us. My name is W.R. Bill Sam, Bill Bobo Sam. Let me say thanks for having us again. I am honor to be here to serve. <coughs> I have uh, actually have worked with the Beaumont Fire Department, the Beaumont Police Department, the City Council. I'm serving at the at-large position at the present time and I'm asking to continue to serve in that position. My involvement includes our Mother Mercy Catholic Church, the Sabine Area Labor Council, NAACP, and many other back-to-school programs. I am going to continue to work my family is here, I was born and raised here, and I want to continue to serve our community. I want to improve the, the, the citizens' places for things for us to do, and working harder to, to make a better place for the senior citizens and our family to continue to live. With that, I ask for your support uh, as for City, city at Large Council. All right, and thank you for all of those introductions. And let's explain something here. Since there are seven candidates, we split them into a group of four and a group of three. We drew numbers to figure out who was going to be in each group. The group of four will go first, of course. So let's get started with our first Hello? question of the night. 
It's one that we also posed to mayoral candidates last night. Harvey was clearly a catastrophic storm that devastated many parts of Southeast Texas, and we had a team effort by the city and private industry here to help restore water supply, an effort that received national praise for the collaboration. So the question is, is Beaumont ready for this hurricane season and what must be done to improve the readiness of the city and its citizens? So for the first answer, let's go to Mr. Pate. Okay, thank you so much, Jim. I can't say enough nice things about the way that we came together with uh, our friends at Crenshaw, the Crenshaws, Exxon Mobil, when they jumped in with the city of Beaumont when we lost our water. As a matter of fact, when you look back and see what happened that day, after within a short period of time, we were up and running because we did work together well. And that's what it takes, the kind of relationships where you can pick up the phone and say, I need your help. And they gave it. And, and that Mr. Made Pate, Beaumont that's time for that question. Spectacular. So let's Thank move you. on now to Mr. Rodman. Um, Harvey was catastrophic for everyone across Beaumont. Uh, and I don't think that we have fully recovered yet. Um, we've had a workshop in the past couple of weeks about how we're not at full capacity and we haven't been at full capacity for a while. Uh, I think with riverfront restoration we have to move forward with that we also have to take a very hard look at our water infrastructure because if those are the two things that are, are most pressing when it comes to that so we have to focus on those two things if we want to be prepared for hurricane season this year thank you and now mr sam yes i thought it was interesting because what it did for us was bring bring all the citizens together to pull together to show that that community effort that we very seldom see in the city and so it really brought all the whole community, not only on the local level, but on the state level and national level, to say that we need to step up and work together. And it was a good show for Beaumont to see people come together and work together, show our relationship in this community. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Renfro. Hey, and also, we, the, the city did, did a good job working together and bringing the people back together. But however, no offense, that the city, the citizen of the city of Beaumont was out of water for two weeks. So these are some of the things that need to be addressed when we get ready for the next hurricane season. All right, Mr. Renfro, thank you. And now we will take a quick break, but after that break, we ask about certain access to a certain building that has become a divisive topic at city council meetings. You're watching Fox 4 News at 9. Meet the candidates. An opportunity for local voters to hear directly from the candidates. Welcome back to our forum. Our next question surrounds the future of the old Milton YMCA building. Many opponents have spoken out at council in recent weeks, saying the center isn't serving the needs of young people and families who live near it. An operator is leasing the building and using it to help people with special needs. What do you think should be done with the building? For the first answer, we'll go to Mr. Rodman. I think that the, the overall tenor of the discussion has gotten a lot he a lot more heated than it needs to be. Uh, the city has signed a contract with, with Ms. Farrell who, who runs the operation. I think that if she were to uh, work with community leaders in the area and come to a resolution, uh, we could possibly see something happen there, but there are also programs in place that we can provide a new location for a community center in, in the South Park area. Okay, Mr. Sam. We're going to have to continue to honor our contract with, with Ms. Farrell. And I think the city is working very hard to make that happen. And so far, we look like we'll be able to continue to work on that and work that out in, in a short period of time. So we just say that we're going to do what the right thing. That's, that's the goal. Do what we have to do according to the law. Okay, Mr. Renfro. Dr. Fair is doing a wonderful job uh, with the special needs. However, uh, the city of Beaumont need community youth centers for the youth in this area to keep them off the streets, to keep them occupied. A, a mind that, that's, that's empty and, and open gets in trouble. So we want to provide those people, those kids, an opportunity. So youth community centers need to be implemented in every section that is needed in the city of Beaumont. Okay, Mr. Pate. Thank you very much. You know, first off, Dr. Farrell's program needs to stay exactly where it is. Dr. Farrell's doing some great things for people that really need the need the help. However, I do think we can work very well with Dr. Farrell and find a middle ground where everybody 
can come together, where we can serve the community, and at the same time make sure we don't interfere with one of the great programs that we've got here in Southeast Texas for those that have special needs. We cannot forget those folks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And now we will move on to our last question for this group. Police and social service groups say the number of homeless in Beaumont has grown dramatically, putting a strain on social service agencies and organizations, as well as hospitals dealing with people who have no other source of medical care. So the question is, what's your plan to deal with the homelessness issue in Beaumont? And for that first answer, we will start with Mr. Sam. That's a, a, a that's a situation that needs to be addressed, and it's going to take more in Beaumont to, to, to solve that. It's, this is an issue that is, is nationwide that we have to address. And so looking at it, the city is going to sit down and bring a group of people together and try to work to make that happen to see what is it that the state and the national office can do to help us resolve that situation. Thank you, Mr. Renfro. It is an embarrassment for this city to have the homeless here on the streets and it's a growing it's a growing problem uh, when I say it's embarrassing because they are under the under the bridge at stores lottering they're all over the place and it's growing and it's sound and it's found it's falling on deaf ears at the council so it needs to be addressed it needs to be solved and we need to get these people in shelters thank you mr. Pate thank you very much as a retired army colonel I'm extremely concerned about the veterans as a matter of fact I've reached out to the Homeless Network does a continuum of care on the programs that they have around the state that will help us take the veterans off of the streets and put them somewhere where we can take care of them. After all that they've done for us, the least we can do is make sure that they're not homeless. We should take care of everybody we can, but definitely the veterans should be first. Thank you. Mr. Rodman. Thank you. Um, there are many, many programs that a lot of cities have already undertaken that are, are a, a pathway for homeless people to leave the streets and get into a working position. One of the things that I'm, I'm really excited to work on is uh, partnering with uh, OC Taylor Center uh, with the trade skills uh, students over there to build small homes that the city can purchase for them and place on city uh, city owned land uh, and get these folks working and on a pathway to homeownership. All right, thank you, and thank you, gentlemen, for your time and your answers. That wraps up questioning for you. Still ahead, we question the remaining three candidates running for the at-large position. Stick around to hear their thoughts. Meet the candidates. An opportunity for local voters to hear directly from the candidates. Welcome back to our candidate forum. We'll now question the three remaining candidates running for one of the at-large positions on Beaumont City Council. And so we want to get to their introductions. First for that, we will go to Mr. Turner. I'm Albert A.J. Turner and I'm running for City Council at large. I'm running for four reasons, unity for all, all four wars. I'm running for my family, my wife, and my three beautiful daughters. I stand for economic development, infrastructure, reduced crime, and of course, youth engagement. I'm excited about the future of our community, and we need you all in the community to pick the best seven people to move this community forward in the right direction. And now, Mr. Felshaw. Good evening, I'm Randy Felshaw, and I'm running for Beaumont City Council at large. I've served this community for the last 13 years through Not In My City. I've addressed racial reconciliation, violence in the streets, and Harvey Flood estimated to reach $3.5 million. The perception of Beaumont statewide for too long has been less than positive. We're perceived as a community that's racially divided, a substandard school district, an infrastructure that's decaying, and a crime rate that's higher than the state average. Southeast Texas EDF is predicting $54 billion is flowing into this area over the next 10 years. This affords us a great opportunity to change the image of Beaumont. If we come together as a community, there is no challenge we cannot overcome. That's why the call to action for my campaign is One City United. And thank you, Mr. Felshaw. And next we have Ms. Parkerson. 
Hello, I'm Marinette Landry Parkinson and I'm running for city council at large. And I also want to empower our youth. Our youth is the future of tomorrow. Without the youth being empowered, where will we be as a community? And so I want to stand on youth empowerment. I want the uh, city involvement from leadership. I want them to come to the table and understand that we need leaders involved in the community. It is our job to understand what is at the heart of the community. And so I stand on community involvement from leadership. And also I want to eradicate homelessness. Homelessness shouldn't even be an issue in our city. As rich and as, as diverse as we are as a community, homelessness should not exist. Thank you. And now with that, let's get to our very first question. Is Beaumont ready for this hurricane season? And what must be done to improve the readiness of the city and its citizens? So the first answer goes to Mr. Felshaw. The city has made improvements, but uh, more is always needed because of our aging infrastructure. Through United Aid of Southeast Texas, since Harvey hit us in August of 2017, I have been working to help rebuild the community. We're on target right now to rebuild 120 homes, estimated to reach $3.5 million. There's more work that needs to be done, and I believe as a community we can accomplish this if we simply come together. And that is time, Mr. Felshaw. So, Ms. Parkinson? The city, we are preparing, however, I believe that we have to use social media at, to our advantage. We have to use some form of the 211 to our advantage to ready the people. We have to keep, keep telling them that they have to be ready. And in order to be ready, we have to step out as, as that leader again and let them know it's time to be ready. We don't want to be caught up again and losing lives, losing loved ones. And that's time for that answer. Mr. Turner? The city of Beaumont should have relationships with entities that are structurally ready for the storm. We should have relationships and plans set up so whereas these hurricanes and these storms of these magnitude come to our community and we are prepared to shelter the people who may not be able to afford to evacuate or something to that magnitude. I think it's key that we communicate with the people and let the citizens know all the options and what are the things we have in place to better facilitate where citizens in a community can go if they don't have the opportunity to evacuate. So we should and have And that's partners. time for that answer. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Still ahead, we question the next or three candidates. We continue questioning them, and we want you to stick around to hear their thoughts. Meet the candidates. An opportunity for local voters to hear directly from the candidates. Thanks for staying with us. Now we're going to talk about the future of the old Melton YMCA building. Many opponents have spoken out at council in recent weeks saying the center isn't serving the needs of young people and families who live near it. An operator is leasing the building and using it to help people with special needs. What do you think should be done with this building? And the first answer goes to Ms. Parkerson. Well, I first believe that we're failing our youth again. We're failing them again in the society. We're failing them again as leaders. The building was intended for them to go there for a safe haven, for a safe place to rest, a safe place to play, a safe place to just have fun. And there we go, we're, we're pulling the carpet from under them again. And so I want them to understand that if we take it from them, we leave them with no other opportunities in our community. And that's time, Mr. Turner. We often talk about retaining our youth, but what are we actually doing to retain our youth? Our youth is our future, and what we invest into them, they will invest back into the community. Dr. Farrell is doing a great job, but we have to figure out a way to share that facility. By sharing that facility, not only will we give our youth hope, we will show our youth that we have an invested interest in them, and they will return that by showing they have an invested interest back into the community. Thank you, Mr. Felshaw. There's no doubt that Dr. Farrell is doing a tremendous job with the special needs children, and we all support her and her great work. But also, we want to create opportunities for the children within the community. So there has to be a workable, common sense solution to this challenge in the South End. We have to come together as a community and find an answer to reach both groups of children. And so I encourage all the leaders in our community to come to the table with diplomacy, and let's find a win-win for everyone. 
Thank you. And now let's move on to our final question for this group. Police and social service groups say the number of homeless in Beaumont has grown dramatically, which puts a strain on social service agencies and organizations, as well as hospitals that they go to to rely on medical care. So the question is, what is your plan to deal with the homelessness problem in Beaumont? And that first answer goes to Mr. Turner. It's unfortunate that the homeless situation we're currently in in Beaumont, Texas, the Salvation Army, they give you one or two free days, and after that, it's $10 a day. I feel, I feel bad and I care for every citizen, matter whether they be in the upper echelon or the small echelon. I think we should have existing programs and sponsor and help existing programs for homeless people. We need to get out there and physically give out goods, give out services, and do what we can to care for the entire community of Beaumont, not just one entity, but everyone. Mr. Felshaw? This is a convoluted problem that no one has a single answer to. I do believe that what has to happen is civic, business, and religious leaders are going to have to come together to address this group of people. It's obvious that Southeast Texas, Beaumont, is filled with good people that have compassion in their hearts. We all want to do our best. And that's why, if elected to city council, I will do as I have done, and that is to pull business, civic, and religious leaders together to find common sense solutions to the challenges and that, that we're facing that. as a city. Ms. Parkerson. Well, first of all, we get stuck on the men under the bridge, or we see the grown people roaming the neighborhoods. However, I want to tell you, I want to employ you on today that the homeless go beyond that. The homeless goes to the, the child that's in the school system or, or, the, or the woman that's living with her family members. And so we want to be able to encapsulate that whole entire population by just building or creating or just opening one shelter right here in the city of Bowman. It's not too hard if we come together as a community. We have to come together. And that's time for that answer. Again, we thank this set of candidates for the at-large position for joining us tonight. Still ahead, we question candidates running for Ward 2 